Professor David Shanks, and I'm the Deputy Dean of the Faculty of Brain Sciences. It's my honour and privilege to welcome you to UCL's 2021 virtual graduation ceremony. I'm delighted to see so many graduates from the Faculty of Brain Sciences here with us today. Uh, and I know that we have many family uh, 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 and friends watching as well. We hope you are as proud as we are of this group and of what they've achieved. Obviously, we wish we could have been celebrating in different circumstances, um, but until we can celebrate safely together, I'm delighted that we're able to come together to do so virtually today. We'll try our very best to replicate the experience you would have had um, in the summer. We will be sharing a short video from our provost. You'll hear speeches from myself and Professor Peter Fonagy, head of the Division of Psychology and Language Sciences. And we'll also hear from an alumnus about what life is like after you finish your degree at UCL. First, uh, a little housekeeping. I'm sure many of us are now quite familiar with virtual meetings. Please do feel free to share messages of congratulations in the chat function at the bottom of your screen. Um, but otherwise, please stay muted uh, unless called on to unmute. Graduates will be announcing names in groups. Once your name has been announced, we encourage you to turn on your camera. Um, and at the end of each group, we will offer you our congratulations and then ask you to turn your cameras off before we move to the next group. Now I want to introduce you to our virtual platform party that joins us today to celebrate with you and who you can see on your screens. Um, colleagues, as I introduce you, please do unmute yourselves and say hello to our audience. Uh, Dr. Julie Evans. Hello, everybody. So pleased to see you. David Newton. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all. Dr. Caroline Newton. And hello from me. Many congratulations in advance. Uh, Dr. Rosalind Potts. Hello, big congratulations to all of you. Maria Karasalidou. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you all here. Uh, Miss Jo Strange. Hello, everyone. Huge congratulations. Nice to be here with you to celebrate. Mr. John Draper. Hi, everyone. Uh, lovely to be here and congratulations, everyone. Professor Alistair McClelland. Hello everyone, uh, congratulations, uh, particularly to my nine project students. I hope you are, you are here. Professor Klaas Arbold. Hello everybody, congratulations in advance. You're the grittiest group I've ever known, wow. Professor Peter Fonagy. Hello everyone, lovely to see you here. Many congratulations. Professor Richard Brahini. Hi there. I'm particularly excited to be reading out the names of our very fine linguistics graduates today. Welcome. Professor Sam Solomon. Hi, everyone. Very happy to be here and very proud of all of you for um, accomplishing this year. Stephanie Agnardi. Hi, everyone. Many congratulations from me, too. And Dr. Joe Taylor. Hi, everyone. Particular congratulations to the um, Year 4 MSIs on the PALS course. I hope I uh, remembered to uh, check everyone in there. Um, <clears throat> I now declare this ceremony open and we will hear a message from the Provost. Hi everyone, I'm Michael Spence, President and Provost of UCL. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all today to your virtual graduation ceremony. And I'd like to offer my wholehearted congratulations to you as you graduate from UCL and move forward to the next stage of your lives. 
course, I speak to many of you dispersed across the world today. We can agree that this situation isn't and hasn't been ideal, and we'd prefer to celebrate in person, but that doesn't diminish your remarkable achievements in any way. The whole UCL community is behind you, and we're in awe of the resilience that you've shown in the face of the challenges posed by the pandemic. Each of you has shown what you can achieve, even under the most trying circumstances. This year marks the 195th anniversary of UCL's founding. We continue to base our principles and beliefs on those of Jeremy Bentham, a commitment to social justice and the availability of education to all. At UCL, we've always believed in changing the world for the better, and as graduates, you'll carry that goal forward. You're a part of UCL's history, but just as importantly of its future too, this is not the end of your UCL journey. You're joining an impressive global alumni community of over 300,000 graduates who support and celebrate each other and who go on to achieve remarkable things around the world. UCL and the alumni community is here for you, not only as you take the next step in your career journey, but for life. So thank you, thank you and congratulations. I look forward to a time when we'll be able to come together in person to further celebrate your amazing achievements. I'm now delighted to introduce Professor Richard Brahini, a Professor of Experimental Linguistics, to present the graduands. Uh, thank you, Professor Shanks. Uh, I am now delighted to commence the presentation of our graduands. I have pleasure in presenting to you these candidates who have been awarded a Bachelor of Arts. The following candidates have been awarded a Bachelor of Arts in Experimental Linguistics. Shi Yu Ren. Caitlin Mary Robbins. Loren Pascal Zoyalan. Bachelor of Arts in Linguistics. Max Nathan Barnett. Monica Jade Bassey. Emma Zoe Froome. Chenjia Gao. Chloe Chung Yi Hong Ying Leong. Olivia Grace Pipes. Anastasia Putilova. Katarina Mara Schubert. Eduard Stoika. Esther Davida van Hoeve. Andrew Mankar Wan. And finally, Bachelor of Arts in Linguistics International Program. Iona Charlotte Annie Carslaw. Sibai Min. That concludes the list of graduands. I ask my colleagues to unmute themselves and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Excellent. I am now delighted to introduce Professor Samuel Solomon, Professor of Visual Neuroscience, to present our graduates. Thank you, Professor Brahani. I'm now delighted to commence the presentation of our graduates. I have pleasure in presenting to you these psychology candidates who have been awarded a Bachelor of Science and Master in Science. The following candidates have been awarded a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. Meta Akela. Begum Arin. Tinika Louise Ashley, Katerina 
Rosa Askam, Violetta Bachi, Afisala Banasan Placit, Fee Hannah Sophie Benz, Muhammad Aleph Lo Bin Mood Adam Lo, Ellen Bonyadi, Christina Helen Campbell Houston, Clara Cow, Ella Chaibi, Isabel Sophie Charnley, Carleen Chong, Kami Kalin Chua. Chuk Hai Chung, Elena Isabella Dogalu, Yuzhen Dong, Anna Eberhardt, Lily Anya Elliott. I would like to pause there and ask my colleagues to unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Well done, everyone. Well done, everyone. Many congratulations to you. Wonderful achievement. We continue on with the following candidates who have been awarded a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. Zedu Gao. Han Zhang Gao, Bethany Charlotte Hart, UV He, Yanran Hu, Simram Kao Kaint. Wing Nya Eugenia Cam, Goose Canber, Sophia Kelestes, Juan Ewing Robin Lau, Nicholas Long. Jessica Louise Lee, Zi Yi Li, Chuk Ying Crystal Ling, Rachel Zhuan Li Lo, Ellen Jane Martin. Eloise Catherine May, Athena Marina Metaxa, Mengxian Chao, Xiaokei Yu Chu, Chachaya Renochat. I would like to pause again there and ask my colleagues to unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Well done. Well done. Very well done. Many congratulations to all of you. Good night. We continue on with the following candidates who have been awarded a Bachelor of Science in Psychology. Marta Rodino. Katerina Mariella Scheibeck, 
Catalina Costa de Nova Stolova. Hosanna Tagamori. Rui Tang. Shivakia Kastioglu. Mizuki Tojo. Jesse Yuk C. Chung. Ella Cheroni Ferrells, Yuan Wu, Chun Hao Kevin Yong, Wing Lam Yuan, Rumi Chloe Yun. Anna Zakova, Tianan Julia Zhang, Ruija Zhang, Yifei Zhu. We now move to our postgraduate candidates, and the following candidates have been awarded a Master in Science in Psychology. Ho Kan Chan, Melissa Sahan, Yuying To Wong, Zhen Yang Ji, and Yong Ching Zhu. That concludes the list of graduates. I would like again to pause there and ask my colleagues to unmute and give a round of applause to our esteemed graduates. Well done, everyone. I'm now delighted to introduce Professor Rosemary Varley, Chair of Acquired Disorders of Language Communication, to present the graduates. Thank you, Professor Solomon. I'm now delighted to commence the presentation of our graduates. I have a pleasure in presenting to you these candidates who have been awarded a Bachelor of Science or a Master in Science. The following candidates have been awarded a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and Language Sciences. Nicoletta Adam. Badumin Ahmed, Prisha Batra, Basha Chandran, Shou Chen, Ying Tong Deng, Luca May Hunt, Kaylee Ann Jackson, Alexander. Damon Jeffrey, Choi Ting Kiu, Jong Won Kim, Yuk Yong Kim, Ying Tang Kwok, Lin Li, Alice Moran, Susanna. Catherine Palmer, Jordan Howard Cedric Rudolph, Han Tong Shen, Maria Leonor Silva Abre Lopez Fail, Advaita Shini Barson. Esther Sitlali Elisa Taubodek. Han Ching Wu. Yi Shang. 
We now move to our postgraduate candidate. The following candidate has been awarded a Master in Science in Psychology and Language Sciences. Benjamin Luke Green. That concludes all of our candidates. I would ask that the virtual platform party all unmute themselves and give a round of applause to our graduates. Well done, everybody. Well done. Thanks very much. Good luck for the future. I am now delighted to invite Professor Peter Fonagy, head of the Division of Psychology and Language Sciences, for the departmental speech. Thank you, Professor Marley. Well, what remains to be said at this point when you heard all the names, including yours, read out? But thank you. Thank you for coming to UCL, our own little globe of a university. Thank you for the contribution each and every one of you has made to making our Division of Psychology and Language Sciences, or PALS for short, just that little bit more interesting and intellectually stimulating. Thank you for asking the searching questions which made us faculty think harder. And also thank you for not asking the ones which we couldn't have answered easily anyway. Thank you for the work that you've turned in that showed how much you learned. And thank you also for the essays and drafts that either neither appeared or were shorter than originally intended, making and commenting just a little bit easier. But above all, thank you for sticking with us through a tough period for all of us and supporting our efforts to make your experience in our programs as productive as we could. We are deeply grateful for your contribution. PALS is in many ways quite a special place to study. As a department, the Shanghai rankings of 500 foremost academic institutions rank the psychology department at UCL as number two in the world. A number of our programs are ranked number one in the world or Europe, at least in those league tables, which we think are worthy of serious attention. But more importantly, we hope that PALS is a special place, not just because of its outstanding subject matter expertise, but because of its openness to intellectual challenge, to a range of views and to celebrating the quality of students' arguments and not letting our own views as a faculty cloud issues. We hope that when you come to educate others, you will have the same generosity of spirit which PALS aims to foster. A spirit of kindness of intellectual sort. I hope that in your different journeys, intellectual openness will always trump dogmatism in the way that I very much hope that we at least sometimes succeed in achieving. In his recent commencement address to Syracuse University graduates, the American writer, George Saunders stressed what turns out to be a deceptively simple idea, the importance of kindness. He wrote, what I regret most in life, he said, are failures of kindness. Those moments when another human being was there in front of me, suffering, and I responded sensibly, reservedly, mildly. Kindness is more than mere sentiment. Real kindness and concern requires us to understand the state of mind of the others. And how that other person came to think and feel the way they do. No matter how different or alien or difficult that might seem to us. In different ways in your programs, we hope that what you learn a little bit about is minds 
studying language, psychology, that will empower you this process of human empathy. Social experience, our capacity to see our own points of view alongside that of another person is the essence of our humanity. From an evolutionary perspective, this ability has enabled us our planetary ascendance. The dominance of our species is the result of our capacity to collaborate, which allows us to transmit and develop complex ideas and build and adapt our cultures to survive in different environments. In order to collaborate successfully, we have to be highly attuned to the social cues that tell us that the people we meet are trustworthy and likely to be mutually collaborative. While collaboration is essential, so is vigilance. We have to be careful about who to trust. But when vigilance dominates, we close our minds and suspicion prevents us from believing what we are told or seeing it as relevant to us. So kindness is the key to education. When we are seeking social collaborators, people whose communications are worthy to take seriously, one of the key things we look for is whether they seem concerned about us and interested in what we think and feel and believe, even if our views differ from theirs. Are they showing kindness to us? All of us can remember kind teachers from our school days who had the ability to influence us. As for those who lack this capacity, we've forgotten them all, along with most of the things they taught us. Kindness overcomes our natural and necessary vigilance and opens our minds to learning and being influenced by others. Kindness engenders trust, which in turn creates a human chain for transporting items of culture across generations. We are all part of this intergenerational bucket brigade. But kindness is hard. It's not necessarily our default. As we get older, we come to see how useless it is to be selfish, just how illogical. The path's challenge to you. Don't wait until you get to my age. Start right now. To the extent that you can, err in the direction of kindness. Our ability to think about other people's minds has enabled us to create a shared social world in which it is possible to think together, to trust and cooperate. We need this desperately, needed it desperately over the past 18 months. The coronavirus has shown us more than ever that it's only by thinking together that we can hope to survive and flourish. And that excessive vigilance and suspicion also breeds lack of concern, unkindness, and social irresponsibility. I hope you can apply this message from PALS more widely, both for our collective mental health and to meet the needs of those who are most vulnerable and most isolated. I'm now delighted to invite our Deputy Dean, Professor David Shanks, to give his faculty address. Despite how different last year has been, some things remain constant. Over 200 of you are graduating from the Faculty of Brain Sciences this week, and I'm delighted to take this opportunity to celebrate your remarkable achievements. In these challenging times, I'm particularly struck by the commitment that you've shown, not only in your studies, 
but also in many ways you have kept our vibrant community alive. As we've all had to adapt to challenging circumstances, your support and the resilience you have shown in the face of many unforeseen challenges has been vital. Congratulations to you all, and I hope you are immensely proud of what you have achieved. Brain Sciences is an exciting and dynamic faculty. We're a global leader in research and education into the mind and brain, and home to some of the most influential and creative academics in the field. Our vision for the future is to use our world leading expertise in brain sciences to solve some of the world's greatest health challenges, transforming society by reducing the global burden of disease. Over the last year, UCL has mobilized its research efforts to provide critical support and understanding in addressing the coronavirus pandemic. Um, here in the Faculty of Brain Sciences, this is including this has included advising governments on how to reduce global transmission rates to prevent the emergence of new variants, understanding the range of neurological symptoms associated with the disease, and developing ways to combat the impact of the virus on patients and healthcare workers. As a faculty, we champion research embedded education and provide opportunities for students to network and communicate the output of their research. We aim to prepare our students not only to succeed, but to become the next generation of experts in brain sciences. Of course, our programs of study are not just intellectually challenging, but are also a great preparation for future employability too. And we're one of the top five universities in Europe for graduate employability. As students of U UCL, you're at the very heart of the university. It's driving force. And as graduates of the Faculty of Brain Sciences, I want you to continue to play a major part in the exciting developments we're planning. One of our key areas of focus over the coming years is on mental health. Our flagship Institute of Mental Health is a world leading center for research into mental disorders, which now affect a quarter of the population. Our research into effective interventions and therapies has been adopted in UK government health policy and aligns with the government's long term plan for the NHS to develop the next generation of mental health professionals to meet the nation's post pandemic mental health needs. The UK needs more high quality clinical psychology training and UCL is a nationally recognized pioneer in leading this expansion. For example, we are the UK's leading provider of research based training programs in fields like eating disorders, psychosis and personality disorders. Our main priority is to use our national leadership position to help improve student mental health care. An excellent example of this is the Psych Up for Wellbeing program established by PALS to improve mental health in universities. Psych Up aims to do this by developing the knowledge base, designing models of care, and supporting partnerships between university and NHS services to simplify access to vital support services. Another significant area of focus is on neurodegeneration. The development of the new UCL Center for Excellence in Neuroscience is on track to deliver major societal impact by translating neuroscience discovery research into treatments for neurological diseases. This state of the art new facility on Gray's Inn Road will house the UK Dementia Research Institute hub alongside new premises for the Queen's Square Institute of Neurology and an outpatient and imaging unit for the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery, a powerhouse of neurological research and treatment that will enable cross collaboration to find better ways to diagnose, treat and prevent devastating conditions like dementia. 
And thirdly, the partnership between the Institute of Ophthalmology and Moorfields Eye Hospital represents the largest co-located site for eye research, education and care in the world. Project Oriel, as it's known, will integrate Moorfields Eye Hospital main City Road Hospital site and the Institute of Ophthalmology within our faculty in a new purpose-built environment on the St Pancras Hospital site in Camden. This will see the creation of a new clinical research and teaching site for eyes and vision, bringing together clinical care, research and education. So as you can see, we have exciting and challenging plans that will make a real difference. And we need your engagement and support to make them happen. You're joining a global community of over 200,000 alumni. And as alumni of the Faculty of Brain Sciences, you're in a particularly fortunate position as we're you know, quite obviously one of the most exciting, dynamic and productive faculties in the university. I say that of course, without any bias. You can keep up to date with the developments I've mentioned and many others taking place across the faculty on Twitter and on the website. We have over 15,000 Twitter followers and we warmly invite you to join that community. So once again, congratulations to you all on what is a truly marvelous achievement and do please stay in touch. As Deputy Dean of the Faculty, I now have the pleasure of formally conferring your degrees. In a moment, we're going to hear from one of our alumni members. Joe Evershed completed a BSc in Psychology at UCL in 2012. Joe Evershed is founder and CEO of Gorilla Experiment Builder, a platform for running behavioral research online, which serves a wide community of students, researchers, and practitioners. Um, know that many of you uh, at this ceremony have spent many happy hours learning and building experiments in, in Gorilla. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. Uh, based in Cambridge, uh, Gorilla now boasts thousands of users globally and is trusted by top institutions, including us at UCL, as well as Oxford, LSE and Cambridge, um, as well as a variety of commercial agencies and public sector organizations. A former financial and business analyst with a background working for the likes of Shell, Joe's first business venture saw her develop a training tool to unleash innovation. She is an Innovate UK Women in Innovation Award winner, very prestigious award, and is passionate about providing behavioral scientists with tools to liberate their work from the lab and accelerate the creation of evidence-tested interventions. Hi, I'm Jo Evershed, the founder and CEO of Gorilla Experiment Builder, which some of you will have used for your research projects. I graduated from UCL with a BSc in psychology in 2012. As you can imagine, Gorilla wouldn't have been possible without the extraordinary relationships I made while at UCL. A particular shout out to Dan Richardson and his vision for the evidence and inquiry curriculum. Thank you, Dan. My time at UCL was transformational and I hope yours has been too. Keep in touch with your peers, the department and the alumni network. That way you'll never be more than an introduction away from some of the most talented and kind people on the planet. Congratulations to you all. You must feel so proud of what you've achieved. Your brains, hard work and resilience have come together to allow you to graduate from one of the best universities in the world. Well done. Many of you will be transitioning out of student life and into work life. So today I have three secrets to share with you. Secret number one, job adverts are a cry for help. So when you're next sitting in a job interview thinking, please hire me, I really want this job. Remember that they're thinking, please be the person that I need. I'm swamped and I need help. They're rooting for you to succeed. They're not trying to, sit to trick you. Secret number two, be a sidekick, not a minion. 
How do you do that? There's an easy way to wow your boss. When you spot a problem, suggest three possible solutions and make a proposal. This eases their mental load and that makes you indispensable. Secret number three, everyone has a superpower. Not a literal superpower, but my best friend's superpower is explaining things. She can distill a complex idea into a structure that's clear and simple and makes sense. My lead software engineer's superpower is making people see it feel safe, and I'm told mine is making people feel bold. The most important job you have is to find your superpower. It's going to be something that other people struggle with and that for you came naturally, and you just kept honing and nurturing it because you love it. So those are my three secrets. Job interviews are a cry for help. Be a sidekick, not a minion, and find your superpower. Congratulations again and Godspeed. You're all superheroes and the world needs your help. Thank you, Joe, for those inspiring words. Before we close the ceremony, let's have one final and well-deserved round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, and most importantly, our graduates, that concludes our virtual graduation ceremony. I offer you my wholehearted congratulations and my very best wishes for the future. Thank you.